ascertain the presence of a quorum. Thank you, Madam President. Councillor Baker. Councillor Campbell. Here. Councillor Siomo. Present. Councillor Edwards. Present. Councillor Sabi George. Councillor Flaherty. Here. Councillor Flynn. Here. Councillor Janey. Present. Councillor McCarthy. Here. Councillor O'Malley. Present. Councillor Wu. Present. And Councillor Zakem. Here. Madam President, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I've been informed by the clerk that a quorum is present. At this time, I would like all guests and colleagues and staff to please rise. Uh, Councillor Flynn will uh, bring our clergy up for the day who will do the invocation. I ask all guests to remain standing during the invocation and then to remain standing after that as Councillor Flynn leads us through the Pledge of Allegiance. Councillor Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. It's an honor for me to introduce someone that I have great respect and admiration for to open this session up with, with a prayer. Katie Cole is the associate pastor of the Fourth Presbyterian uh, Church in South Boston. Um, this church does incredible work in helping so many people, especially the poor, our immigrant community, fighting for social and economic justice, uh, being there for our homeless. I had the opportunity to be there recently for Thanksgiving with Councilor Flaherty as well, and I know Mayor Walsh is also a great friend of the church, but at this time I would like to um, ask Associate Pastor Katie Cole to open, open this session up with a prayer. Good morning, everybody, Good morning. or I suppose afternoon. Congratulations, you all get to do very exciting work in the world, and so please join me in prayer. God of grace, we pray today for the children of our city that here they may thrive and grow into kind, creative, and courageous people full of your wisdom. God, we know that even, we know that at our best we fall short and at our worst we utterly fail in providing for all of our children so that they may thrive. And so in humility we confess our shortcomings to you, God, and we pray today for the children of our city, for children who are hungry, for children who are not safe at home, in school, on our streets. We pray for children who face homelessness. We pray for children whose lives have been torn by gun violence, whose parents are away in prisons and in detention centers, whose families are ravaged by the diseases of addiction. All of these children we lift up to you, O oh God. And sometimes, in moments of your grace, we remember that though we consider ourselves leaders, counselors, commissioners, mayors, grown-ups, in your eyes, God, we are but children. And so we pray that you restore to us a childlike sense of wonder, curiosity, and creativity, that as we go about the work of serving our city, you restore to us our God-given imaginations to see new ways forward, so that all children may thrive here. God, we meet you in the faces of our neighbors, and we know you by many names. I pray to you in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, thank you, Councillor Flynn, and thank you, Pastor Cole. Uh, Madam Clerk, at this time, I would like to call out of order docket 0129. Any objections to the chair calling out of order docket 0129? Hearing no objections, Madam Clerk, if you could read docket 0129 into the record. Thank you, Madam President. Docket 0129, communication was received from Dion S. Irish, Chair of the Board of Elections, certifying the results of the municipal election held on November 7, 2017, for the Office of City Councilor at Large. Now, if I may begin with the results from Commissioner Irish. Boston Election Department, January 4th, 2019. For your records listed below are the candidates' results for the Office of City Council at Large 
at the municipal election in Boston held on November 7, 2017. City Council at large elected for two-year term. Candidate Michelle Wu, 15 Augustus Avenue, District 5, 65,040 votes, took first place. Ayana S. Presley, 1910 Dorchester Ave, District 3, 57,520 votes, second place. Michael F. Flaherty, 1726 Columbia Road, District 2, 51,673 votes, third place. Anissa Rasabi George, 32 Mayhew Street, District 3, 45,564 votes, fourth place. Althea Garrison, 47 Woodcliffe Street, District 7, 18,253 votes, finished fifth. Dominica De Rosa, 1569 River Street, District 5, 11,647 votes, sixth place. William King, 16 American Legion Highway, District 4, 8,773 votes, seventh place. And Pat Peuso, 25 Beach Glen Street, District 7, 6,124 votes and was in eighth place. Sincerely, Dion S. Irish, Chair of the Board of Elections Commissioners. And now to the City Councilor, to the City Council. Councilors, in accordance with Section 15, Chapter 452 of the Acts of 1948, your body is hereby notified that a vacancy has occurred in the City Council because of the rec resignation of Ayanna Presley. Also, for your information, please be advised that in accordance with said Section 15, the remaining members of the City Council within 15 days after this notification must choose as City Councilor for the remainder of Ms. Presley's term whichever of the defeated candidates for the office of city councilor at large at the last regular municipal election received the highest number of votes and is eligible and willing to serve. Records of the election department indicate such highest number of votes were received by Althea Garrison of 47 Woodcliffe Street in Boston. Ms. Garrison has expressed her willingness to serve. Very truly yours, Maureen Feeney, City Clerk. Thank you, Madam Clerk, um, and thank you for certifying, uh, thank you to Commissioner Irish for certifying the election results. At this time, I'd like to invite Althea Garrison to come into the chamber. Um, the mayor will also join us to say a few words and to um, issue um, the oath of office. Althea. Thank you, Madam President, and through you to the members of the City Council, uh, I want to wish everyone a very happy new year to the, the guests and staff that are here today. Uh, I want to wish you a well, happy new year as well. Uh, to the Council-elect, I want to congratulate you um, on, on this election and congratulate you on today's exciting day and swearing in. Uh, the council elect served one term in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, so this is not her first swearing in, so it is your second swearing in. And I'd just like to say to the council that I look forward to you working with you, uh, particularly the first part of this year, on a report that was just given uh, from the Boston Fire Department and our public safety officials and taking that report very seriously. Uh, I know that today uh, there was some conversation about how this happened before in the past and nothing has been done. Uh, that was a different era, a different, a different um, elected body, a different city council, a different mayor's office, a different commissioner, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you uh, w directly and through the president's office to address the concerns uh, of our female firefighters and of all our public safety officials in the, con in, in this, in the city of Boston. So I just want to say there, say that first. And now I would like to also, um, I'm going to administer the oath of office to you. So if you would uh, please raise your right hand. And then after the word, I uh, state your name. I. I, Althea Garrison. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth, to of, the Massachusetts, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution. 
and will support the Constitution. Thereof. Thereof. So help me God. So help me God. After the, after the word I put your name. I. I, Althea Garrison. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As a member of the city council. As a member of the city council. Of the city of Boston. Of the city of Boston. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. And understanding. And understanding. Agreeably to the rules. Agreeable to the rules. And regulations. And regulations. Of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. And the laws of the Commonwealth. And the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. After I say amen. I. I, Althea Garrison. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Councilor. Well, thank you. In case you're wondering, uh, our new counselor, Councillor Garrison, is officially signing the book. Um, and at this time, I uh, invite Councillor Garrison to say a few words. As the newest member of the Boston City Council at large, I would like to thank my friends and supporters who kept the faith in my candidacy and went out and voted in the municipal election of November 2017. Also, I would like to thank the voters of West Roxbury, Rosendale, High Park, Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, as well as voters of South Boston, Charlestown, the South End, North End, uh, East Boston, and Austin Bright. I'm grateful for your vote during the municipal election of 2017. For those of you who are wondering whether I will be running for re-election, the answer is yes, I will be running for re-election this year. <laughs> There's a lot of work that needs to be done, as well as uh, creating real affordable housing. That is one of the key issues that I would like to work on. Some form of rent control and evictions without cause is terrible. And we need to put an end to that. My top priorities are senior citizens and addressing the problem of homeless veterans in which I dearly and compassionately care about. Thank you for being here and God bless you. I would like to also thank Mark Murphy for agreeing to serve as my chief of staff and Leo of BNN show the emancipator. Thank you, and God bless you. Um, as Councillor Garrison takes her seat, I, I, on behalf of the entire City Council, of course, want to welcome Councillor Garrison to the Council. We've had many conversations, and I know she's ready to get to work, and each of us are ready to partner in the work with her. And like she said, we have a lot of work to do, and since the Mayor mentioned it, not just with respect to the Fire Department, because there's much work to be done there, uh, public safety agencies, you name it, the list is long, and of course, the Council is dedicated and ready to get to work. Um, so of course, um, I want to thank Councillor Garrison again for running having the courage to run and for agreeing to serve. Um, I also want to extend another Happy New Year to my counselors, all of you. Welcome back. Here we go. Um, this is going to be a great year, and we look forward to working as a collective to move um, this city forward for all of our residents across the entire city of Boston. So thank you. 
Um, at this time, I think Councilor McCarthy has a special presentation, and then after that presentation, we will get into the regular order of business. Councilor McCarthy. Do you have guests you want to invite up? Yeah, I'm going to invite uh, Mayor Walsh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Ionella Chamber. If I could have Jim Galuli and Maureen Murphy come on down. <clears throat> and I'd like to welcome uh, Mayor Walsh back to the, uh, the dais as well. There are some people actually in this building who never knew that Maureen and Jim were married because of the different names. So it was a really a scandalous affair for the last 25 years in the building. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring them up. I have uh, two citations, uh, certificate of uh, official resolutions um, from the city of Boston. There's a bunch of whereases um, all about their entire lives, but I'm, I'm just going to go a little off the cuff here. Um, you know, they, they've been friends of, uh, of Hyde Park for over 45 years. Um, they have two wonderful kids, um, and you, you know they've done so much for the community there. Both of their families have been involved for so many years. Jim used to run uh, Ward 18 for the previous uh, for the previous mayor, and I remember many a time uh, getting called up to run into his kitchen and give him numbers and all that good stuff. I remember getting the phone calls from either Maureen or Jim saying, "Hey, we're having a standout tomorrow morning, and I'm I'm, I'm taking attendance, so you might want to go to that one." <laughs> I, I remember those days. Um, you know, together they've dedicated 50 years of service to the city of Boston, and that is uh, an unbelievable um, a, a gift that they gave us. And uh, between Maureen, at, yep, absolutely. And between Maureen being in uh, MIS and in the auditing department before that, and uh, and Jim being the deputy in uh, BTD, working under uh, a bunch of different uh, commissioners and. Uh, Jim was always that, that rudder that kept the ship uh, straight in BTD, and uh, he's, he's just been a great friend. Both of them have been great friends to High Park and certainly a great friend to me. So I don't know which one of you want to jump up to the mic, oh, no. but uh, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be Maureen, but congratulations <laughs> on 50 years and a wonderful retirement. I think the both of us <clears throat> are going to leave with mixed emotions because we've gotten to meet so many nice people, both within the building, within city government, across the communities in the neighborhoods. Uh, it truly is one of the most advantageous positions a person could be in, is to be so close to the people that are being served by government when you're at the municipal government level. Um, We've, we've developed great friendships, but right now we want to rest, relax, travel a little bit more, and most importantly, take naps whenever we feel like it. <laughs> Thank you very much to everybody in the room and those who couldn't make it. We greatly appreciate your friendship, and you'll probably see us around complaining at a neighborhood meeting. <laughs> and thank you, I, I have to say this, uh, Mayor Walsh, welcomed me in and, and, and Maureen in to the new family that got established in City Hall and we're forever indebted to the people who have led the city for being so gracious to us and giving us the opportunities. So thank you, Mayor Walsh and, and all of the city councilors. I've enjoyed coming down and testifying <laughs> and answering questions. Um, I'm not sure if I have any notes left or any questions that I haven't answered, but let me know if that's the case. While everyone is standing for, for, uh, for both Jim and Maureen, I have a certificate of recognition for Maureen because Jim, I'm not done with them yet. There's still reports that I have not received, so until I get those reports, you're not getting a certificate. But I want to uh, congratulate Maureen in 26 years of service to the city of Boston. Uh, in incredible appreciation and support uh, and inspiration she has provided to countless numbers of people uh, at the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Division of Insurance, the Office of the Secretary of State, the Boston Public Schools, the Department of Innovation and Technology, 
And on behalf of the city of Boston, I want to congratulate you on your retirement um, and your extraordinary career and best wishes for continued success. And, and I just want to take a minute for Jim. I got sworn in in January of 2014. Um, at that time, a lot of people left the administration uh, to go on to do other things. Um, I did not have a transportation person, commissioner. Um, there was, didn't know who was going to go into transportation. Somebody had suggested Jim Galuli. I had a conversation with Jim, and he ran that department for a long time. And he ran that department with distinction, with honor, uh, a true, true public servant. And I want to thank both um, Jim and Maureen for their service to the public. Uh, oftentimes, public servants don't get the, the praise or the credit for what they do. They're the folks that work behind the scenes to make us as elected officials look good. They're the folks that make things run and make things move. So on behalf of all of the residents of the city of Boston, I'd like to thank both of you and congratulate both of you on your retirement. Um, thank you. And um, I, I also want to acknowledge that um, Representative Russell Holmes was here as well um, for Althea Garrison swearing in. And I also, um, I think Congressman Presley is still in votes, but wanted to send her uh, a letter to congratulate uh, Althea Garrison. She did personally call to extend her congratulations to you. She wants to be a partner in this work. And so um, I apologize for not saying that earlier. But please consider her partner in the work. And I want to thank Congresswoman Presley. Okay, Madam Clerk, you ready to move on to regular order of business? Uh, moving on to approval of the minutes. If there are no corrections to be made, uh, the minutes of the last meeting will stand approved. Seeing and hearing no objection, the minutes of the last council meeting are so approved. Uh, Madam Clerk, moving on to communications from His Honor the Mayor. Docket 0105. Um, can people walk out slowly so that we can just, or quietly and slowly? Actually, someone yelled quickly. <laughs> can you folks ex walk out quietly? We still have work to do. Right. Moving on to communications from His Honor the Mayor. Docket number 0105, message in order approving home rule petition to the general court entitled Petition for a Special Law Regarding an Act Authorizing Additional Licenses for the Sale of Alcoholic Beverages to be Drunk on the Premises in Boston. Uh, d Madam Clerk, can you also read docket 1016? <coughs> Certainly. 0106, message in order approving home rule petition to the general court entitled a petition for a special law regarding an act to further leverage commercial development to build housing, create jobs, and preserve inclusionary development. Dockets 0105 through 0106 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. 
Docket number 0107, message in order for your approval to authorize the sale of certain portions of public way known as Gold Street, as shown on a plan of land entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, discontinuance plan of Gold Street, South Boston, dated November 9th, 2018, specifically containing about 6,261 square feet for the discontinued parcel. A docket 0107 will be assigned to the Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation. Docket number 0108, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $2,250,000 in the form of a grant for the FY19 Boston Fire Department State, State Training Grant awarded by the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services to be administered by the Fire Department. The grant will fund the Boston Fire Department's training division for FY19. The state earmark supplements city funds for training, supplies, and materials for the Boston Fire Training Division and Academy. Docket 0108 will be assigned to the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Docket number 0109, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $283,000 in the form of a grant for the Double Up Food Bucks Program awarded by the United States Department of Agriculture passed through the Fair Food Network to be administered by the Office of Food Access. The grant will fund additionally additional activity and programming from the Mayor's Office of Food Access beyond the original award, including the hire of staff, program evaluation, and additional support and outreach in targeted neighborhoods to provide nutrition incentives to SNAP recipients. Docket 0109 will be assigned to, to the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Docket number 0110, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $171,242 in the form of a grant for the Title III Ombudsman uh, 2019 awarded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, passed through the Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs to be administered by the Elderly Commission. The grant will fund services and advocacy for seniors in nursing homes. Docket 0110 will be assigned to the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Docket number 0111, message in order authorizes the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $123,715 in the form of a grant for the FY19 Fair Housing Assistance Program awarded by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to be administered by the Fair Housing and Equity. The grant will fund the processing of housing discrimination complaints received by the Boston Fair Housing and Equity Commission. Uh, docket 0111 will be assigned to the Committee on Housing and Community Development. Docket number 0112, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $100,000 in the form of a grant for the FFY 2019 Traffic Enforcement Program awarded by the United States Department of Transportation passed through the Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security to be administered by the Boston Police Department. The grant will fund high visibility traffic enforcement of motor vehicle laws, including, but not limited to, speeding and aggressive driving, impaired driving, and occupant protection. Docket 0112 will be assigned to the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Docket number 0113, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend a grant of $50,000 in the form of a grant for FY19 First Responder Naloxone Administration Grant awarded by Massachusetts Department of Public Health to be administered by the Police Department. The grant will fund the purchase of naloxone and related supplies for use by the Boston Police Department and Fire Department. Okay. Zero, one, one, three. Oh. Are you nope. yep. Council McCarthy, you have the floor. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, Madam President. At this time, I'd like to, I stand to uh, request a suspension and passage of docket 0113. Uh, the sooner that the uh, NACAN gets into our first responders' hands, uh, the better for all involved. 
Uh, thank you, Councilor McCarthy. Councilor McCarthy, who is the chair of the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice, seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0113. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0113 has been passed. Docket number 0114, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept an amount of $35,200 in the form of a grant for the FY19 Fair Housing okay. Assistance okay. Travel no, no, Program, no. awarded by the United States okay. Department of Housing and Urban Development to be administered by the Department of Fair Housing and Equity. The grant will fund travel costs for the Office of Fair Housing and Equity employees to attend training that is required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Councilor Edwards, are you speaking on docket 0114? Yeah, I think it's, um, I apologize, yep. uh, Madam President. This grant is basically to assure that we get the training that we need and are able to travel across um, the country to assure that the folks in our fair housing development, or in our fair housing department, are able to get to um, DC. So it's a small amount of money. It assures that we get the resources and the training. I would like to suspend and pass. Thank you, Councilor Edwards. Um, at this time, Councilor Edwards seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0114. Uh, she's the chair of the Committee on Housing and Community Development. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0114 has been passed. Docket number 0115, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $3,726 in the form of a grant for staff and administration expenses at City Hall Child Care Center, awarded by the United States Department of Agriculture, passed to the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources to be administered by the Boston Center for Youth and Families. The grant will fund FY19 child and adult care food programs. Uh, Council O'Malley, who is the new chair of a former Councillor Presley's Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Thank you for taking on the new role. Um, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, as the chair of the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities, I rise to ask to suspend and pass docket number 0115, which is a message and order authorizing the city to accept and expend a very small grant. It's $3,726 in the form of uh, a grant for staff and administration expenses for the city uh, hall child care center. It's a grant from the USDA uh, for the daycare center, which as we know is also a BCYF facility. A grant will be used for day-to-day -day supplies in the center as well as to support the incredible uh, men and women who work down there. So ask uh, my colleagues to, uh, given the, the small nature of the grant, I don't think a hearing is necessary. And if we can just vote to accept and expend, we can make sure that money gets put to good use uh, presently. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council O'Malley. At this time, Council O'Malley seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0115. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0115 has been passed. <coughs> Moving on to reports of public officers and others. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we could read dockets 0116 through 0128. Thank you. Thank you. Docket number 0116, notice to receive from the Mayor of his absence of the city from 7 a.m. on Friday, December 14, 2018, until 7.30 p.m. on Friday, December 21, 2018. Docket number 0117, notice to receive from the Mayor of the reappointment of Ann Galvin as a member of the Boston Fair Housing Commission for a term expiring December 10, 2021. Docket number 0118, notice to receive from the Mayor of the appointment of Stephanie Everett as a Commissioner of the Boston Employment Commission for term expiring July 1, 2019. Docket number 0119, notice to receive from the Mayor of the reappointment of Kennel Bloomstein as a Commissioner of the Boston Employment Commission for term expiring July 1, 2020. Docket number 0120, communication was received from Timothy J. Smith, Executive Officer and Boston Redepi Retirement Board regarding certification and transmittal to City Council of Boston Retirement City Systems calendar year 2019 operating budget. Docket number 0121, notice was received of the contract for payment in lieu of taxes known as the pilot agreement entered into by and among the City of Boston, the Boston Housing Authority, and BC Camden Limited Partnership. Docket number 0122, notice was received 
of the contract for payment in lieu of taxes known as the pilot agreement entered into by and among the City of Boston, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, and CVPA Chain Forge LLC. Docket number 0123, notices received from the Mayor of the appointment of Kwok Tron as a member of the Boston School Committee for term expiring January 2nd, 2023. Docket number 0124, notices received from the Mayor of the reappointment of Jerry Robinson as a member of the Boston School Committee for term expiring January 2nd, 2023. Docket number 0125, communication was received from Brian P. Golden, Director of the Boston Planning and Development Agency, regarding proposed minor modifications to the Washington Park Urban Renewal Plan, project number MASS R-24, with respect to parcel H-1 and H-3. Docket number 0126, communication was received from the City Clerk of the Filing of the Redevelopment Authority of the Third Amendment to the Report and Decision on the Benet Brith Senior Housing Chapter 121 Project. Docket number 0127, communication was received from the City Clerk of the Filing by the Boston Redevelopment Authority of the Three, amen <coughs> three Amendment th of the Report and Decision on the Roxbury Mount Pleasant Apartment Chapter 121A Project and docket number 0128. Communication was received from the city clerk of the filing by the Boston Redevelopment Authority of the 14th Amendment to the report and decision on the Dudley Neighbors, Inc. Chapter 121 project. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Dockets 0116 through 0128 will be placed on file. Moving uh, on to motions, orders, and resolutions. Docket number 0130. Councilors Zakem and Janey offer the following home rule petition for a special law regarding an act authorizing the city of Boston to offer early voting in municipal elections. Councilor Zakem, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd uh, move to uh, suspend Rule 12 and would like to add you, uh, Madam President, as a co-sponsor if uh, the body is agreeable to that. Any objections? No. Madam Clerk, if you can add me as a third co-sponsor. Thank you, uh, Councilor Thank Zinko. you, Madam President. Uh, this is a refile um, that, uh, from toward the uh, latter part of 2018 uh, to allow early voting, which we have seen so successfully in our state and federal elections, uh, to occur in our municipal elections. Uh, we just uh, talked about the election results and turnout numbers and how important it is that everyone has a voice here in City Hall and in our government. Uh, this bill came about through a partnership uh, with um, Cambridge City Councilors, the mayor and vice mayor over there who were able to approve this home rule petition and send up to the State House at the end of last year. Well, I know some of their representatives are working on this. I've spoken to members of the Boston delegation at the State House who are ready to work with us in getting this passed and making sure that with uh, working with the Elections Department, the administration, and this body, uh, we can get this in place for upcoming elections. So look forward to having a hearing, to really nailing down the details of this. I want to thank uh, Councilor Janey for her <coughs> continued support on these important issues of access, uh, civil rights, and voting rights, and look forward to getting this done this term. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Zakem. Councilor Janey, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Madam President. I um, also want to thank my good friend and colleague, Councilor Zakem, not only for his partnership, but for his leadership on these issues. Um, very important uh, civil rights and voting rights issues. I'm proud to partner with him. Um, we know that Boston is the birthplace of democracy, and it should be leading in this area. Uh, early voting is very popular. We've had good success in our state elections. Um, if we look back to 2016, which was a presidential year, over 44,000 people cast their votes early in the city of Boston. Uh, just last year in 2018, uh, we had a, a governor's race and nearly 30,000 uh, Bostonians took advantage of early voting. This is so important, particularly in this context when we know that there are efforts underway to suppress the vote. We saw that happen in Georgia and other places in our country. We need to make voting more easy uh, and more accessible to the residents in the city of Boston. Uh, this is particularly important to me as someone who has been fighting for voting rights access as a founding board member of Mass Vote, who does amazing work uh, in this area, and just as an African-American woman who has heard stories 
uh, from her parents and grandparents about the difficulties of voting in this country. Um, given that it is 2019, a new year, it is time that we take advantage <laughs> of the technology that we have before us and make uh, voting uh, more accessible. And so I'm very pleased to offer this with uh, Councilor Zakem and with you, Madam President. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Councilor Janey, and thank you, Councilor Zakem, for the uh, partnership. I don't need to add anything else, but that I look forward to working with you, um, as well as our colleagues, to actually get this passed at the State House. I think we're going to see a lot of home route petitions this year, and so how do we come together to make sure that they actually <coughs> do something with them up there? So thank you very much for your partnership on this important legislation. At this time, anyone want to speak on this matter or add their name? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could please add Councillor Siomo, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Flaherty's name, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Garrison, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor O'Malley, and Councillor Wu. Uh, docket 012, I'm sorry, 0130 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. Docket number 0, I'm sorry. Yes. Zero Docket one. number 0131, Councilor Zakem offered the following order for hearing regarding the use of public ways. Councilor Zakem, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam mm -hmm. President. While the last matter I spoke on is one of um, general importance to the city of Boston, I would argue to our country's democracy at large, this hearing order is a distinctly neighborhood focused issue. It's about the use and in my view and many of my neighbors view overuse of our public ways, streets uh, in the downtown neighborhoods for parades, road races, 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, um, national realtors races, national whatever organization happens to be in town races, uh, often on the weekends, often in the middle of the day that I believe put an undue burden on folks in these neighborhoods, not only because many of these are not properly advertised, Mm -hmm. the way the marathon is. Everyone knows when the Boston Marathon is. Everyone's excited about it. People in the neighborhood are excited about the Walk for Hunger. Things that have a long tradition in our community, we welcome and we want to continue working to enhance. However, there's been a proliferation over the last several years after a moratorium in the prior administration of granting of too many permits for these races uh, without notice to residents, without really a view on the impact. I hear from folks who can't get their kids to piano lessons who can't get themselves to doctor's appointments because roads are closed and we need to do better on this. So I look forward to having a hearing with the transportation department, the mayor's office, the police department, and folks from these neighborhoods. It's particularly an issue in the Back Bay, but it extends to Beacon Hill, to Fenway, to many of our downtown neighborhoods to find a solution here. Whether that's a legislative solution or whether that's a policy change we can work out uh, with the administration um, is something that we will work on in this hearing. I look forward to having this hearing quickly. Uh, before we get into the spring when more of these uh, events are permitted. So thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Zakem. Councillor Flaherty, you have the floor. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, please have my name. A very similar situation happened when the Esplanade uh, had shut down. Uh, Council Flynn and I, our, our neighborhood is overrun with um, road races and 5Ks every single weekend. So just all the issues that uh, our colleague, uh, Councillor Zakem, had expressed uh, were the concerns that our community had talked about, so we had to sit down obviously with the city officials, but also state uh, DCR folks as well to try to find an accommodating schedule that allows some of these races to continue, and they're for very important and charitable causes, uh, but there is a, a significant impact to, to the directly impacted community, so I, I feel uh, for what the uh, district, my district colleague is going through, and would love to add my name onto it and see if we could make some sense of it and, uh, and have designated areas where we're having these events, but also um, give some neighborhoods a break. Um, there are other neighborhoods that would obviously love to host events and, and have an infusion of, uh, of, of, um, of some foot traffic and, uh, and have their uh, folks had earned dollars spent in that neighborhood. Uh, but it just seems that it's always coming down to one or two neighborhoods that are really bearing uh, the burden for every single event in the, in, in the town. And I think that we, we need to find a more equitable way to, to disperse though, but also bring some relief to, to residents that are trying to raise their families and get to appointments and stuff like that. So. Look forward to an expedited hearing. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Councilor Flaherty. Madam Clerk, if you could add Councilor Flaherty's name, as well as Councilor Sabi George, Councilor Flynn, Councilor Edwards, uh, Councilor Wu. Um, at this time, Docket 0131 will be assigned to the Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation. Docket number 0132, mm -hmm. Councils Flynn and Edwards offer the following order for hearing to discuss the impact of partial federal government shutdown 
on Boston Veteran Services and challenges facing veterans and military families in the city of Boston. Councilor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President, and I, I want to say thank you to Councilor Edwards as well for um, agreeing to sponsor this with me. Um, Councilor Edwards, I know she'll talk about it, but she comes from a military family, so she, I know she, very well that she understands the concerns military families are going through uh, right now with the government shutdown. Um, this has been going on, Madam President, for three weeks, and although the VA um, budget is not impacted at this time, um, there are programs for veterans that will be impacted such as Housing and Urban Development has a program similar to the Section 8 program, but it's a voucher program for veterans through HUD called VASH. At some point, they may, that may be discontinued because of the government shutdown. And what do we say to these veterans, these military families that are no longer able to pay their rent through this voucher program? The U.S. Department of Labor also has a job training program for veterans. It's out of the employment and training program at Department of Labor. And some of the job training programs for returning veterans will also be impacted. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with Congressman Stephen Lynch over the weekend along with Council of Flaherty, and we talked about some of the um, concerns we have about uh, the federal government shutdown and how it impacts veterans, how it impacts military families. And I also had the opportunity to talk to um, a representative from Senator Warren's office recently, um, recently as well. Another concern I have, it may not be part of this um, hearing, but the U.S. Coast Guard, um, the, they're working right now and they're not getting paid. And all of the, all of the public safety along the harbor is done by the Coast Guard if there's a problem on your boat, who comes to rescue you? It's the Coast Guard. So the, these hard-working men and women are working and they're not getting paid. That's, that's very unfair. Um, I, I'm glad to work with uh, my colleague, Council Edwards, and try to come up with um, a strong statement, try to come up with a plan. The state administers a program called Chapter 115 Benefits, and it it's administered by the state, but funds go to the city, and it's geared towards um, low-income veterans. Maybe at some point we could consider um, having a waiver for, um, for some of these veterans that, that are over the, over the federal guidelines um, in terms of income, giving them an opportunity to um, get some of these Chapter 115 benefits so that they're able to pay their bills, whether it's electric bill, food for their kids, uh, tuitions. But we, we ask a lot for our veterans, we ask a lot for our military families, and at the same time we have a federal government um, under, under the president that is shutting down the government, hurting so many people, so many people that really need government to survive. Um, so I think it's, a, it's an important issue for the city council to focus on. Again, I'm glad to um, partner with my colleague, Councilor Edwards. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Councilor Flynn. Councilor Edwards, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. And I do want to thank my colleague from South Boston, Councilor Flynn, for inviting me to be part of this conversation and helping to have what I think would be a robust hearing. I honestly, truly hope we don't have to have the hearing, as in the shutdown maybe will be over by the time we need to call for it. But in as much as uh, we will have to have that, it's I think this conversation is important that we take that a granular view at looking at how veterans are directly impacted. It's true, the overall budget right now hasn't been touched, but the fact of the matter is veterans need various services from all different areas and levels of government. And I think that we need to make sure that every single one of those services that they, that they fought hard to earn and, and have is readily available to them. I also want to make sure that, you know, my colleague touched on the fact that the, 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 that there is a shutdown due to the presidential, um, due to our president, and I, I just find it irony, ironic, actually, that the president is, is hurting people to hurt people. We have folks who are at the border, we have an immigration issue, and he's, he's, he's hurting Americans to hurt immigrants or, or, or people who are trying to come into the country, and I, I, I personally, 
I don't see the logic in it. I don't think anyone really here sees the logic in that. And I just want to make sure that that we, we always take the, the view that no matter how, what craziness is happening in D.C., that here in Boston we're taking care of our veterans, we're taking care of our most vulnerable, and we're making sure our government is functioning in the most efficient, transparent, and equitable way possible. Thank you, Councilor Edwards. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter or add their name? Um, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councilor Siomo, Councilor Asabi George, Councilor Janey, uh, Councilor Flaherty, Councilor McCarthy, Councilor O'Malley, Councilor Wu, Councilor Zakem, as well as the chair. Uh, docket 0132 will be assigned to the Committee on City and Neighborhood Services and Veterans and Military Affairs. Docket number 0133, Council Flynn offered the following order for hearing regarding the issues related to stray voltage in the City of Boston. Councilor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. This is a refile. I will, I will be brief and try to highlight some of the um, main points. Um, last year, there was, there was a dog that was electrocuted um, through stray voltage. It's happened several times over the last 10 years. Uh, we, had, we had the opportunity um, to talk to the Chief of Streets, Osgood, the Department of Public Works, Eversource, the city's animal control um, in Massachusetts Society Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Um, I know some of my colleagues were at the at the um, at the hearing as well. Um, from my discussion last year with officials from Department of Public Public Works, it is my understanding that the city of Boston contains older electric cabinets, and during the winter months, as we will see soon with the with the snow on the ground. The ground and the proximity of in infrastructure can become saturated and mixed with salt used to help clear the city's roads and sidewalks. When that happens, this combination will allow the ground and the salts, it can corrode wiring and grounding lugs to present conditions where tragic events like this can, can, can occur. Um, I think the city of Boston is doing good work on this issue. Certainly we, we can do more, including public service announcements, but it is my goal, um, Madam President, to reconvene another working session with the appropriate people in city departments um, and come up with another plan, come up with another public service announcement moving forward, how we can limit the opportunity for dogs to be electrocuted. I know I would, we have, I have a dog and I'd be devastated, my wife and two children would be devastated if something ever happened to, to our dog. I know how most dog owners feel. So I think it's an important issue. It's something I'm going to focus on. And I just want to say thank you to my colleagues for your support last year on this issue. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Councillor Flynn. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter or add their name? Um, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Siomo, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Janey, Councillor McCarthy, uh, Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Malley, Councillor Wu, Councillor Zakem, as well as the Chair. Um, docket 0133 will be assigned to the Committee on City, Neighborhood Services, Veterans and Military Affairs. Docket number 0134, Councillor Edwards offered the following, a home rule petition regarding an act relative to affordable housing and workforce development in the city of Boston. Councilor Edwards, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is a home rule petition that seeks to update the city's language program. Um, I'm actually very pleased um, to have found on a Monday that the mayor has already demonstrated some leadership in this as well and recognizes that this needs to be a priority for our community. Um, Regarding linkage specifically, as you know, it's a development impact fund. It's, it's one in which we are acknowledging that as we are building luxury, as we're building more units, that in many cases there's a negative impact on a lot of our neighborhoods. And as a result, these funds are meant to be a, a form of mitigation. But unfortunately, in many cases, they have not been updated and, and certainly haven't been kept up with inflation for many, many years. While there's an 8% increase that's been allowed, many administrations have foregone that increase and have not done it until very recently with the mayor's administration doing just one increase of 8% which is allowed by the statute. So what this linkage, this home rule petition does is it will adopt, if passed, the uh, recommendations from the linkage uh, nexus, um, excuse me, the linkage 
Nexus group that had several recommendations, including uh, possibly updating our linkage to as high as $24 a square foot, but, but, and also linking it to the consumer um, price index and also making sure that it is regularly updated automatically to assure that we don't have to wait for people or an administration to think it's okay at that point to update the linkage. The point is that as we grow, we should, this should not be a continued debate. This is a mitigation fund that should be growing with us and that it should be automatic. And so I hope that my colleagues will join me in supporting this. I know it needs some work. I know we're going to have to get down granular, get to the numbers and making sure we balance the interest of a growing city, uh, developers, tenants and homeowners. But I want to make sure that I think and I understand that we do want to make sure our city is growing equitably and that we are providing the funds for more housing. So. Um, that's, that's pretty much it for the home rule petition, and I hope, uh, hope you will support me eventually. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter or add their name? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Garrison, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Janey, Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Wu, Councillor Zakem, as well as the chair. Uh, docket. What docket is that? One, zero, 0134 one, will be assigned to the Committee on uh, Government Operations. Docket number 0135, Councillors Edwards and Asabi George offered the following order for hearing regarding, regarding student transportation to Boston Public Schools. So. Councillor Edwards, you have the floor. I'll, I'll just be very, very brief. First, I wanted to spend Rule 12 and add Councillor Wu uh, to this. Any ob um, objections? Madam so Clerk, if you could 12. add Councillor Wu as a third co-sponsor. You have to Rule 12. Yeah, she said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. And, and just a very brief, we, this is a refile from mm -hmm. last year to continue the conversation on school transportation equity, assuring that we are, um, if we are going to be providing busing services, that we're really uh, making sure that those who have the hardest um, commute are accounted for, and also looking and to make sure that as the budgets are being spent, uh, that they're efficiently spent. Thank you, Councilor Edwards. Councilor Sabi Georgia, Council Wu, looking to speak on this matter? Nope. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add uh, to that Councilor Siomo, Councilor Flaherty, Councilor Flynn, Councilor Janey, Councilor McCarthy, Councilor Zakem, as well as the chair. Uh, docket 0135 will be assigned to the Committee on Education. Thank you. Docket number 0136, Councilor Edwards and Wu offer the following order for hearing regarding pension fund disclosure, socially responsible investment, and reinvestment. Councillor Edwards, you have the floor. <laughs> Again, uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam President. I'd like to suspend Rule 12 and add Councillor um, O'Malley. Any objections? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor O'Malley as a, as a third co-sponsor. Thank you. Good, Again, this is a refile, continuing the conversation we started last year about where our retirement is going and assuring that where, as a city, we're truly invested in a future that's sustainable. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor O'Malley. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to thank uh, my uh, partners on this, the District Council from East Boston, the at-large council from Rosendale. Just very briefly, when we had introduced this last, uh, probably I'd say early winter, late fall, I had noted that Arbella had uh, calculated there was about $6.2 trillion in assets uh, under management that had divested from fossil fuels company worldwide. Since that time, we're talking a matter of two months, that number is at now $8 trillion. So simply put, I'm, I'm a bit of a broken record when I say every environmental steward uh, or every fiscal conservative ought to be an environmental <laughs> steward as well because uh, clean energy is outperforming traditional fossil fuels in the stock market by a two to one ratio. So by doing this, and I know this is just one piece of it, uh, we're not only doing what's right and sending in a positive message, we're also delivering better returns for our, uh, for our pensioners. So thank you again to my colleagues for their partnership on this. Uh, thank you, Council O'Malley. Councillor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I, I want to um, thank and recognize the councillors um, that called for this hearing. Um, I think it's important. I remember in the, in the early 80s during the, um, the racist government in, in South Africa, Boston invested money in South Africa at that time. And um, Boston became the first city I think it was 84 or 85, Boston became the first city 
to divest, to take their money outside of the uh, South African government, first city in the country. Um, it had a, a major impact on kind of uniting, uniting the, the, the country that supported social and economic justice. And it was a huge bo boost to human rights and, and, and civil rights as well. Um, in, in fact, after Mandela, when he was released from prison, the first city he visited was Boston because of Boston's historic step of divesting money from a, a racist government. Um, so I'm glad to, um, I'm glad these, these sponsors are taking this initiative. I think it's an important issue and I'm glad to support it. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Councillor Flynn. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add uh, Councillor Flynn's name uh, and Councillor Siomo, Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Janey, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Zakum, as well as the Chair. Uh, docket 0136 will be assigned to the Committee on Ways and Means. Docket number 0137, Councillor Wu offered the following ordinance regarding Fair Work Week employment standards for city contractors. Councillor Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. This is a refile as well. Um, I think we're close on this one. Um, I want to thank Councillor Flaherty for having the hearing on this. Squeezed it in at the end of the year, uh, and we heard from groups who are concerned, but this is uh, would apply to city workers and employees of companies directly contracting with the city to ensure that we're giving them the fundamental uh, baseline for family stability, which is a predictable schedule. Certainly there are, are, are ways in this ordinance that allow for last minute changes and many of the concerns that we heard at the hearing, uh, but this is about making sure that taxpayer dollars are getting as much value as we can, so not just hiring the employee, not just getting the service, but making sure that we are providing for good jobs, fair wages, and this level of security, which is a, a big problem in our economy with more and more hourly wage workers, more part-time workers trying to balance everything. So um, hoping to seek a vote on this early in the year, and we might have a, I'll defer to the chair on more working sessions, et cetera, but um, eager to get going on this one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council Wu. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter or add their name? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Janey. Uh, docket 0137 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. <coughs> docket number 0138, Councillor Wu offers the following an ordinance regarding the right of free petition. Council, will you have the floor? Thank you. Um, so again, similarly, I think I've refiled this a couple times now, but I think we're getting close, at least on the language that I would like to present to the council. Uh, just wanted to highlight that in this version of the ordinance, again, the broad idea is that residents should have a way to directly shape the city council agenda and bring ideas before us through a petitioning process that several cities in Massachusetts already offer, with the council guaranteeing a hearing on a topic that a certain number of residents have asked for within a certain period of time. There were, con I think most of the concerns were about um, the elections department's ability to keep up with certifying signatures, particularly during election season when there's a lot going on. The language now, instead of you know, taking recommendations from some colleagues, instead of breaking it up and saying there's a priority filing period or this and that, we just add language that when the election department is certifying for an election, there's a, a period of time in which this would not apply. So if there's a special election, for example, or something else that comes up, this ordinance would always be in line with their ability to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wu. Um, at this time, anyone looking to speak on this matter, add their name. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Asabi George. Docket 0138 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. Docket 0139, Councillor Wu offered the following, an ordinance regarding good food purchasing standards in the city of Boston. Councillor Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, sorry, almost done. Uh, this time. one is, again, thanks to Councillor Flaherty, we had the initial hearing and it was a great conversation with a big coalition about how we can squeeze value out of taxpayer dollars by looking at the whole food uh, supply chain and attaching some language to our food procurement process that would ensure some recognition and preference for locally produced food, uh, for animal welfare, for workers' rights, and um, the districts and the 
places that this is already happening across the state have reported that the financial, and I'm, I'm sensing Councillor COO here, that the financial, um, the added costs actually aren't what you expect. That in a lot of cases, you are, by preferencing local producers, you're actually saving money because you're not paying for the shipping or um, trucking from far away or food being flown in from out of state, but rather um, from Western Massachusetts. So there's a back and forth there about the budget piece, but again, hoping to seek early action on this in 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Wu. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter, add their name? Let's speak. Councilor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I, I want to say thank you to Council Wu for sponsoring um, this order. All Boston residents deserve access to fresh, affordable, healthy food. This proposed ordinance seeks to connect neighbors, neighborhoods, small businesses, and local farms to create jobs in the food processing and distribution industry, as well as to increase access to products grown locally and in Massachusetts. Um, I was walking up Beacon Street earlier, and there was a, a rally out in front of the State House, and they were also talking about this, this issue, but they, were, they also highlighted that some of these nutritional programs um, are being cut now because of the federal government shutdown. So I, I think making sure that the poor and the needy and our families have access to um, healthy foods is, is a priority for any type of government, and I just want to say um, thank you to Council Wu for her leadership on this issue. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Madam Clerk, if you could add um, Councillor Flynn's name, as well as Councillor Siomo, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Janey, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Malley, Councillor Zakem, as well as the Chair. Um, docket 0139 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. Docket 0140, Councillor Wu offer the following order for hearing to discuss the City of Boston's local assessment payment to the MBTA. Council, will you have the floor? Thank you, Madam President. Could I suspend Rule 12 and add Councillors Asabi, George, and Flaherty as original co-sponsors? Any objections? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add uh, Councillor Asabi, George, and Council Flaherty as uh, original co-sponsors to the order. Thank you. Thank you. This is a hearing order that we didn't get to have the hearing on last year, um, but on a really important matter that is uh, relevant at the state level as well as the city level. Boston pays an annual assessment to the MBTA every year. In FY 2018, this was almost $86 million. They demand it, we pay it, no questions asked, and we have no say whatsoever about how services happen. Um, Councillor McCarthy and, I, and Councillor O'Malley are in their districts, <laughs> and, and now where I live, um, our neighborhoods have been left out on the commuter rail side from equitable fares, and throughout the city, buses are crowded, services going down, and um, people are opting away from transit. So whereas the state, you know, when they, when the city is owed money from the state, for example, in charter reimbursements or other matters, they can underfund that line item. The city of Boston never gets a, we, we pay up fully um, as we are obligated to. And so this is about having some direct conversation about where our money goes that we're paying in a lot every year, as well as the future governance structure of the T. When the Fiscal Management and Control Board was put into place after the horrific winter um, T shut down in 2014 into 15, the cities and towns that the T serves used to have a vote on the T budget, and that vote was eliminated. The FMCB now replaces that. That structure in you know, Boston doesn't have an appointment, doesn't have the ability to have direct say. Um, that structure was supposed to be for three years with the potential to extend it for two years, which they took. So it expires in 2020, 2021, and we need to talk about how Boston has a say after that. It, whether it's a vote, you know, back on the budget, or a seat on the board, um, we need to be able to, this is our residents, everything that's happening here um, on so many of the topics we care about, access to housing, access to education, access to jobs, comes down to whether the T, climate change comes down to whether the T is functioning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councilor Wu. Councillor Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President, and thank, uh, through you, thank, uh, thanks to Councillor Wu for her effort and also for including uh, us on this. I know that um, it's alarming that we're spending uh, $85.8 million, uh, which makes up half of the local assessments, and we don't have a seat uh, and a vote on the MBTA budget uh, or a seat on the Fiscal Management Control Board. So uh, I echo the comments of uh, the previous speaker and lead sponsor. I know that residents um, 
routinely lament about the subpar experience on the MBTA, calling it unreliable, overcrowded, inconvenient. I know Councillor has mentioned, Councillor McCarthy has done some great work and we've had a number of hearings and meetings along with uh, Councillor O'Malley as well. So, um, uh, and just this morning, uh, Commonwealth Magazine confirmed what I've been telling the BRA for probably five to seven years now, which is that um, uh, car ownership in Boston is growing. Uh, and it's growing because you can only be late for, for work so many times. You can only go to the street corner and get in line behind 50, 60 people and see not one, not two, but three, four buses going by filled to a capacity and having the T tell you that, that you're at capacity, they're not adding any additional bus service. Furthermore, people from the environmental standpoint don't want any more buses and fumes. So, um, which, uh, which very timely Commonwealth Magazine article, and I encourage uh, you all to read that. The BRA is of the opinion that people are driving less and people don't own cars, and yet they're approving projects. At one point, it was point, uh, point, uh, 0.80. Okay, you drive a full car. It has four wheels, has two doors, and your roommate has a car too. Uh, and they're of the opinion that that's not the case, and, and so they're requiring less parking requirements with respect to the development projects, and I've been banging this drum now, and I'm finally glad that we have some support uh, through the Commonwealth Magazine. So I look forward to the public hearing uh, to bring about uh, a bigger voice for Boston uh, on the MBTA budget piece of it, uh, as, as outlined by the lead sponsor, but also take a real hard look at the service uh, and the reason why people, people are abandoning uh, the MBTA service and opting for... Um, car ownership and or driving themselves to and from work and appointments. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Saba George, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you uh, to the lead sponsor on her work um, in all things transportation over the uh, last few years, in particular the last year. I, I do want to just, what I'd add to uh, the comments that have already been shared is how important it is for us as a city, um, for us as the economic engine of this state, uh, to leverage the, the investment that we make in the T and, and work to do that through this, through this effort for sure. And just recognize that this $85 million could be spent on other things like our schools. And uh, we talk a lot about that work, but need to, you know, really put the, the pressure on the state and on the MBTA in particular to make sure that we are able to leverage that investment, um, that contribution, that check that this city writes every single year on behalf of the taxpayers here in the city of Boston. So I look forward to uh, the work ahead. I look forward to um, hopefully some sec success in this space uh, because it's so important that we have it for all of our residents in the city of Boston. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sabi George. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter or add their name? Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Flynn, Councillor Garrison, Councillor Janey, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Zakum, uh, Councillor Siomo. Uh, did you raise your hand, Councillor? Councillor Edwards, um, as well as the chair. Docket 0140 will be assigned to Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation. Docket number 0141, Councillor Sabi George offered the following order for hearing regarding build BPS. Councillor Sabi George, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I rise. This is a refile with some edits. Uh, in December, at the last school committee meeting in, uh, of 2018, a vote took place that determined the future of two high school communities. The West Roxbury Education Complex, home to West Roxbury Academy and Urban Science Academy. They will be closing at the end of this school year. All but one of our school committee members voted in favor of this effort. Uh, this vote was an incredible disappointment to all of the students, families, teachers, faculty, and the greater commu school communities, but mostly for our students. That building is not in good condition, needs extensive renovation and likely demolition, but those kids deserve their community intact and uh, to be intact for a move that should have been and should be better planned. Over the next few years, I do believe that Build BPS has the potential to improve many of our schools. I do not believe that BPS has been able to provide sufficient answers. As chair of the Council's Committee on Education, a former teacher and a Boston Public Schools parent, it is important that we, we keep our families engaged, that we keep our school communities engaged, and to hold accountable our Boston School Department to provide a real plan. It is crucial that decisions are not being made behind closed doors and that a clear timeline and financial plan is shared with the public, 
and with the Boston City Council. The future of our displaced students and the future of many of our schools still remains unclear. It is important that we make sure that the voices of our school communities are heard and that student need is prioritized. We need to be thoughtful about how we are moving forward and how Build BPS affects our students, their families, and our extended school communities. I look forward to having an expedited hearing to analyze the Build BPS plan as it stands today. Our students, our schools deserve answers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sabi George. Councillor Edwards, you have the floor. Uh, very briefly, and I do appreciate uh, my, uh, my colleagues' leadership in this conversation. I, I think it's worth noting, though, however, with Build BPS, however this conversation goes, that I have found, at least for my district, a wanting, uh, a, a wanting amount of transparency and really understanding and deep analysis. The fact of the matter is we have a 10-year plan um, that starts off with them telling my district that essentially we're overfunded and we're good to go and that they're not really going to be investing much more in Charlestown especially because of the investment uh, that this, the city has committed to other parts of my district. Um, while we are getting some schools in East Boston, the fact is there is nothing in this plan or indicated in the leadership or the voices of the leaders of this plan ironically without a superintendent or I think without a chief of education so maybe that's why we, we lack that leadership is um, we, in my district specifically, we are going to be doubling the size of the largest housing development in New England. And to tell me from the very beginning that you see no need to invest further in Charleston especially is frustrating, especially because that development is going to take about 10 to 12 years and this entire plan will as well. So you have a plan starting off with an understanding that is, is completely mismatched with what my community is going to look like. The same goes for East Boston. We do hope that there will be another high school there, but at the fact of the matter is we are developing close to 10,000 housing units. Um, uh, to put that in context, uh, that's at Suffolk Downs. To put that in context, East Boston's about, you know, 15,000 right now. So we're developing another seaport in East Boston. And again, that's going to take 20 years. So that, that would at least last longer than build BPS. But again, I really don't see a deep analysis or understanding of how our education system is going to meet the needs of rapid growth in the next 10 years. So add to that conversation that I, I look forward to having. And, and just, I think it's worth noting, um, the one dissenting voice is no longer on the school committee. I don't I don't think that that's coincidental. I don't like it. I don't think that's democratic. And so a, a conversation, again, my colleague has already kicked off, um, <coughs> Councilor Asabi George. Thank you for your leadership in talking about whether we need to have an elected school committee or not. People shouldn't be punished for having a voice or a backbone. Thank you, Councilor Edwards. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could add Councilor Edwards' name. Councilor Janey, you have the floor. <laughs> Not much to add after that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, both of you, Councillor Edwards and Asabi George, um, for your leadership and your voice in this matter. Um, I just want to echo the importance of engagement, particularly of our, our parents, our students, and our teachers in this process, the importance of transparency and accountability. This is a huge issue. Oh, new phone, sorry. <laughs> um, um, so that's it. I just I want to please add my name. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Janey. Madam Clerk, if you could add Councillor Janey's name. Anyone else looking to speak on this matter? I quickly want to add Councillor Edwards. I think you said it great. More transparency and accountability is key. I knew Jerry very well. I still know Jerry. Um, I was quite disappointed um, at her exit. Um, not to knock the new, I'm sorry, Regina, I apologize. Not to knock the new um, school committee member. Um, but Regina, I think that could have been handled quite differently and um, wanted to say that publicly too. So thank you. Uh, at this time, um, Madam Clerk, if we could also add Council O'Malley, Council Wu, Councilor McCarthy. I think we already got Council Janey correct. Yes, Councilor Flynn, Councilor Flaherty. I think we got Councilor Edwards, also Councilor Siomo. At this time, oh, Councilor Zakem as well. I apologize. Um, docket 0141 will be assigned to the Committee on Education. <coughs> Docket number 0142, Council Campbell offered the following order for hearing to review the Boston Police Department's body-worn camera pilot program, final study, and results, and the status of implementation. Council President Campbell. Uh, thank you, Councilor Siomo. This is essentially a refile of um, a hearing order from last year. We tweaked the language just to add, not only would we like in this hearing to have a review and conversation about the final results of um, 
the study that Northeastern put out with respect to our body cameras pilot program, but we also want to have a conversation about the status of the implementation of the body camera program. This body um, fought for the pilot program to happen, including colleagues who are no longer here who are dedicated to this, including Councillor Jackson, Councillor Yancey, and of course Congresswoman Presley. Um, we got that pilot program for six months. We extended it for a year. Um, we had this incredible study that came out of Northeastern pushing us to actually do it. This body put $2 million in the last budget for that to happen. Um, but we do not and have not had an update on where we are with respect to implementation of the actual program. Um, I know there are folks in the community who want to know what is going on, but they also want to have an opportunity to participate um, or add some thoughts to the policy that governs that pilot, um, so, sorry, that final implementation. Um, and they also want to know what units, as we do a phase in approach, will get the cameras first, second, and third. Um, and obviously, most folks want the units that have the highest number of complaints to be considered for implementation in the first phase of, of um, the rollout of the body camera program. And so this is essentially a refile, but hope. Uh, a hope that we can actually have this as soon as possible. Uh, many, of course, gave our new commissioner time to get settled in and to adjust um, and to get his team set, which I think is set. And so I hope that we can do this in short order. Thank you, Councilor Siamo, and thank you to my colleagues as well. Thank you, Councilor Campbell. Uh, would anybody like to add their name? Councilor Zakum, Councilor Wu, Councilor O'Malley, Councilor McCarthy. Councillor Janey, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Edwards and the Chair, and Councillor Garrison. Thank you. Um, docket zero, which one's this? 0142 is assigned to the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Do Do docket yeah. number 0143, Councillor Campbell offered the following order for hearing to discuss the possibility of creating a traffic enforcement unit within BPD and exploring the pros and cons of installing traffic enforcement cameras. President Campbell. Uh, thank you, Councillor um, thank, thank you, Councillor Siermo. Um, I, this is a hearing order that came out of a discussion um, last year that we held in the district, um, in District 4, with residents from every part of my district, Dorchester, Mattapan, Jamaica Plain, and Rosendale. Um, but these are issues, of course, that every neighborhood in the city of Boston shares, which is speeding cars, um, traffic congestion, um, fear of your life when either crossing the street, driving down the street, riding your bike, you name it. It's probably at the top of the list with respect to constituent cases that we get in our office. This body has done some really incredible things. One, pushing the administration to expand the budget for our slow streets, Vision Zero. Of course, pushing to change the speed limit. But we all know if you change the speed limit and you don't have any enforcement, that is useless. Um, so at this meeting, many residents, and we had um, officers from C11 present, they have been engaging in this conversation for a really long time about what they can do. Many officers, frankly, feel a little bit frustrated because in addition to solving crimes and showing up um, with respect to public safety concerns, they also want to show up on traffic concerns. They want to do enforcement, but they don't think they have enough resources and maybe even human capital to do so um, as quickly as residents would like. And so out of this conversation, uh, out of this meeting with BTD, uh, Commissioner Fiendaka was there, Chief Osgood, um, Vision Zero, Slow Streets, Charlotte was there. Many folks in administration who worked tirelessly every single day were there to work in partnership. And one conclusion we came up with was creating possibly a unit within BPD that would explicitly focus on enforcement of traffic concerns. Um, it was even suggested by some folks in the room that we maybe even uniform those folks who are doing this um, separately from those who are doing actual public safety or crime work. Um, give them separate uniforms, give them, equip them with um, the tools they need to truly bring our enforcement to the level it should be. Um, we know there was a recent article in the Globe citing Registry of Motor Vehicle Records that demonstrated that Boston is behind when it comes to enforcement, um, comparing us to other cities that are doing far better. And so this is an opportunity for us to have a hearing on creating this unit for this specific purpose. In addition to that, exploring the possibilities of having cameras, that has come up in the past, but there are pros and cons. There are many reports out there that say this could be a good thing, 
this could be a bad thing. I want to give kudos to Councillor Wu, who has been pushing transportation, infrastructure, um, anything related to transportation um, for years, um, was also quoted in our article. Um, but there are legitimate, and Councillor Flynn as well, for your recent push, I apologize, um, on lowering the speed limit. Um, but there are some concerns and that have come out from other communities about the cons of possibly using uh, cameras, um, whether it's just more surveillance in certain communities and what that means, um, whether it's having a disproportionate impact on folks who truly don't have the ability to pay. Um, so I think this is a great time in, in conjunction with this conversation on creating this new enforcement unit or expanding uh, what it already exists in BPD to also have a robust conversation on using cameras. And regardless of how we come out, if we say let's do it, then let's actually do it. Um, so I look forward to the partnership of every single person on this body. I know that all of us deal with these concerns every single day. And it's not enough for us to say, we're going to be doing more, we're going to be doing more. People are dying. Um, so this is urgent, and the time is now. And so I think um, we can accomplish um, something with respect to this in 2019 and look forward to having a conversation first with the administration before taking next steps. Thank you, Councillor Siomo. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Councillor Edwards. To um, congratulate the maker, uh, President Campbell, on your leadership on this conversation and also acknowledge the leadership and conversations that have already happened when it comes to safety after the death of a child in your neighborhood, um, after folks have died recently, even riding bikes. This is a life and death issue, and I do appreciate your leadership on this. But it does come back to with all the great ideas that we've had, either with slowing down the traffic or looking at charging for parking, it always comes down to the same thing, and that's enforcement. And so it is true that we need to look at how we're going to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to enforcement, not just good ideas. I do think that, um, especially in our neighborhood in East Boston, with the way the traffic has been going recently, we have found that there's really only been one thing that has worked, and that is having a police detail to keep us moving while we're in the middle of construction by the tunnel. The same is like it's same for Sullivan Square in Charlestown. It is having a police officer or officers there to move the traffic while we're in the middle of planning. And I think that that should be possibly link to some of our development money as well uh, to help fund this additional unit. As we're building and causing traffic, we need to then have the built more development dollars, more developer dollars go in to help, um, help to support these kinds of uh, enforcement uh, initiatives. Uh, I just personally think that at the end of the day, we are, it is a matter of planning, it's a matter of making sure that we're enforcing, but more importantly, it's really taking this as serious as, as we should. If we don't, we will, have, we will continue to have people literally dying on the streets of Boston for nothing except trying to go to work or walk or ride a bike. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Flynn. Thank you, Councillor Siomo, and uh, I want to say thank you um, to the Council President for her leadership um, on this issue, as well as Councillor Wu and Councillor Edwards. Um, I also want to thank Councillor Frank Baker as well for his tireless work on, on this, on pedestrian safety issues for, for so many years. I've, I filed a, a hearing order yes, with Councillor Baker. It would be to reduce the speed limit from 25 to 20, but also strict enforcement of our speeding laws. Um, we talked about this last night with Councillor Janey um, at the South End Forum, and um, the, the feedback we received from the South End residents at that, at that meeting um, is even the South End, um, you know, the, the streets are very dangerous. People are driving 40, 50 miles an hour. We need more to make sure that um, pedestrian safety is, is, is critical. I think it's the number one issue facing, facing our city pedestrian safety, and I'm glad to sign on to this to this hearing order. Um, I, I know we had a terrible accident of a young young boy in my community, and the whole town is still grieving over, over that terrible loss. But we need to continue to work hard, to work together, to bring more experts in, in, in giving us great advice, or sound advice on how we can reduce speeds, how we can make our streets safer uh, for everybody, especially for the elderly, for our children, for the disabled. Um, I think it's a critical issue. It's, it's something I would support, and I want to say thank you to the, the Council President for her um, leadership on this issue, and um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flynn, and please add Councillor Flynn's name. Councillor Janey. <clears throat> 
Thank you. Um, so first, just please add my name. I want to thank uh, the sponsor for her leadership, certainly Councillor Wu, for your leadership on these issues. Uh, how folks use our road, whether they're driving cars, uh, their own cars, or you know, ride sharing, whether they're cycling, um, walking, in wheelchairs are so important. This is an issue that I hear over and over and over and over again in my district. Last year, I hosted a community forum in response to hearing all of this. I hosted a community forum in my district to talk about these issues. We had the chief of streets and his team come. Enforcement, clearly a huge issue. One, we need to do more in terms of our infrastructure, but we also need to make sure that we have enforcement. Not sure, I'm really feeling the more surveillance and cameras, um, but I think it's worth a discussion and, and having, uh, hearing the pros and cons of both of those. Um, so uh, again, um, just thank you for your leadership. This is an important conversation. We need to do much more as a city to make sure that everyone who uses our roads can do so safely. Um, so thank you uh, for your leadership and add my name. Please add Councilor Janey's name, Councilor McCarthy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President. Um, as my good friend from uh, Roxbury just stated, I'm not feeling the cameras either. But having said that, the discussion is certainly worthwhile. I think that, um, as uh, Councilor Flynn had stated, the, um, our biggest complaint in the district office is either speeding or not moving at all, right? <laughs> um, and pedestrian safety is a huge issue. Bike safety is a huge issue. And I think that uh, Matt O'Malley and I were just chit-chatting about it. You know, one of the biggest issues that we haven't really addressed as a city, whether it's BTD or BPD, is texting and driving. And, and I think we can all agree that the 13 of us could stand out in front on Congress and state, and if it's really a $100 fine to text and drive, we could probably balance the budget in about an hour and a half. There's not anybody who drives through this city that doesn't have one hand on the phone and their face buried in it. And that's where I think a lot of these accidents are happening. And not only pedestrians, not only drivers texting, but walkers texting and walking right out into the road. Um, and I, I did see a biker the other day texting and driving down Congress Street, which is actually very talented. I'm not <laughs> sure how he does it. But um, so I, I'd like to add that the whole texting issue into it as well, uh, if allowed, because I think that's one of our serious issues to protect our own citizens. And I'd like to sign my name, please. Please add Council McCarthy's name, Councilor O'Malley. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, rise to commend the Council President for her leadership. Um, as has been said, I, I fully support certainly the beginning of the ordinance as it talks about traffic enforcement unit within BPD, looking at new things. I too share a lot of skepticism as it relates to traffic enforcement cameras. Um, this is an issue that I've been following for quite some time. Case Western Uni Reserve University recently did a report on what's happening in Texas. In Texas, they've had traffic cameras for about 10 or 12 years now. They're actually moving away from them um, in many cases uh, for issues as it relates to profiling, for issues as it relates to the constitutionality. And the safety issue, and this is what I found the most interesting, is that non-angle accidents, so essentially being rear-ended, um, uh, rates have gone up. 18% in Dallas and 28% in Houston where they have traffic cameras. And the issue is obviously if someone is speeding looking to maybe run a light um, and see the line chair, see a camera, they're gonna slam, they may slam on their brakes. Um, the number of people then running red lights obviously decreases, but the, uh, the alternative is you're seeing some more accidents happen that way. So I, I think that we need to be cautious as it relates to traffic cameras. Um, having said that, having a opportunity for all of us to sit down to convene the relevant stakeholders for BTD and BPD in terms of traffic enforcement is something that we should be doing. We also need to be thinking outside the box as it relates to um, looking at ways, raised crosswalks, uh, something known as virtual speed bumps, which you know are the way lines are painted or the striping can be done to help slow down speed. There's certain, some innovative things we can do at very, very little cost. Um, that will have a profound impact. So look forward to uh, participating in the hearing shortly, and please add my name. Thank you. Please add Councilor O'Malley's name. Would anybody, uh, Councilor, please add Councilor Wu's name, and the chair, and Councilor Asabi George. Docket one zero, uh, z oh, I'm sorry, and Councilor Flaherty. Anybody else? Please put docket 0143 in the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Docket number 0144, Councils Flaherty and Flynn offered the following order. For a hearing to discuss the inclusionary development policy and affordable housing. Councilor Flaherty, you have the floor. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to this time move for suspension rule 12 and have the name of our colleague, City Council Lydia Edwards, added as an original co-sponsor. There's no objection. Any objections? Uh, no. Thank Madam, you, Madam President. Uh, Clerk, can you add um, Councillor Edwards as a third co-sponsor? Thank, thank you, Madam you. President. Uh, our city continues to uh, go through an, un an area of unprecedented growth and development. We hear every day from constituents that uh, uh, and residents that are unable to afford the rents, uh, they're not able to afford to buy. Those that currently own simply can't afford the property taxes and the homes that they've lived in for years. So uh, the city's inclusionary development policy as well as linkage are tools that help us leverage uh, private development to build more affordable units. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to commend our mayor who earlier this week filed legislation uh, included in his overall package in a home rule petition that would potentially strengthen both linkage uh, and the IDP. Uh, Councillor Flynn and I came upon this early fall when we learned that there was development projects happening in our neighborhood where folks were just ignoring the IDP. Uh, proud to say I think that the BRA has finally caught up with a couple of them. I think they just levied a fine of somewhere in the vicinity of about 600,000. Uh, which I think hopefully will deter uh, similar activity from happening in the future. Nothing uh, more disgusting uh, than uh, a, a greedy developer and, and not to broad brush uh, developers, but in these particular instances, building units uh, and purposely skirting the IDP because it made more sense for them economically, I guess. Uh, they were able to sell the, all of the units at market rate and they took a chance. Mm. Uh, they'd rather pay the fine um, than anything. It's almost like coming in town and realizing if you can park in a meter and get the ticket for overstaying the meter because you don't want to go in a garage, it just makes sense. So, um, and then we obviously were working closely with our colleague, uh, Councilor Lydia who had had a tremendous value in putting uh, this whole um, uh, order together uh, with respect to identifying areas of the city that are obviously experiencing um, uh, folks being displaced uh, and an opportunity here for us to really dial in, find out how the program is working, uh, how we can strengthen it, and more importantly, how we can enforce it. And if developers get the message that uh, they can't just ignore the IDP uh, and continue to build market rate without taking into uh, context the folks that are being displaced. And uh, so I'm looking forward to an expedited hearing uh, and committed to making sure that uh, residents and neighbors are, are afforded uh, the greatest opportunity to try to stay in the neighborhood that they were born and raised in, where their support system is, where their family is, and keep them in the city because we're losing too many residents to, to the suburbs. So thank you, uh, Madam President. No, oh, thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Edwards, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank my uh, colleagues, Councillor Flaherty and Councillor Flynn, for allowing me to be uh, part of this uh, really important conversation. I, I want to make sure that we're clear that there's IDP and linkage, and linkage is really about leveraging the private doctor, uh, dollars of commercial investment and bringing that over to help pay for housing. And IDP is about how when we go to plan for housing and call for affordable units and tell developers what our recipe is to make sure that we're an affordable city, that we're actually doing it in a way that is an affordable city. And so today, we're in part of the triannual renewal that um, the administration put in or implemented in 2015, saying we will, through his executive order, come up with and renew IDP. That conversation has started. So we want to make sure, and one of the first asks that we have had from advocates is that that conversation just doesn't happen on the desk of the BPDA with the administration, but instead is a robust, robust community conversation to make sure as many advocates as possible can come forward and say what IDP should really look like, where it's missed the mark and where it's actually helped, where when we have allowed it, we've actually not monitored it and saw that some of the units went away, where it took too long to build affordable units, for example, and some developers said, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this, this building. I also would add to that conversation that when it comes to looking at the percentage of 13, uh, looking at the 13 percent, the actual number, we need to revisit that and honestly ask ourselves, are we asking enough from developers? The other look that we need to have is it's very project specific, as in a building over 10 units, the IDP applies. Well, there are a lot of developers and a lot of individuals who are building a bunch of triple-deckers or redoing a bunch of triple-deckers throughout, and so their portfolio might be a couple hundred units, but none of them are over 10 units on an individual basis. As a result, someone can build a couple hundred units and never build one affordable unit in Boston because of the way the IDP is, is, is set up. So I ask us to not only look at project specific and that 13%, but look at portfolio specific and look at how many units someone has been able to build and make money in Boston and not build one affordable unit. It's about making uh, sure that this is also not just part of an executive order so that we have the will of an administration, which we do have right now, and we do have the leadership, and I thank the mayor for that, 
But I want to make sure that it's beyond that will, that it be actually becomes part of our zoning code. Many people do not realize that it is not part of our zoning code. So if it's chosen not to be implemented, if someone doesn't want to do it, we don't have to. Developers don't have to. This has become a problem in that we always have to have this conversation and push for political will. If it were part of our zoning code, it's something that we can amend as the public. It's something that we can move on on a regular basis. And so I think we need to, to, to have a firm commitment. We need to say it as a city that this is something that we want permanently in our code and how we're going to build in Boston, that it will be affordable, it will be accessible, and it will be community-led. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you to Councillor Flaherty to Councillor Edwards on your leadership on this important issue. Um, both of you remain focused on housing stability and affordable housing, and I'm happy to work with you to ensure Boston remains a city for working people, for middle-class families, for the poor, for the needy. Um, I'd also like to thank Mayor Walsh and his administration for their work on this issue as well. Council Flaherty highlighted um, a couple cases of developers that were skirting the, um, the law, and they were fined $600,000. I, I, I would think they should be fined that amount, and their license should be suspended as well for a period of time. Um, it was also discovered that three other projects failed to comply with affordable housing requirements. These actions resulted in the permanent loss of designated affordable units for Boston residents. I know all my colleagues here a lot from their neighbors, from their, from their friends and community leaders about this issue. At a time when our city faces an affordable housing crisis, the greed and actions of, of some unscrupulous developers to skirt their obligation that they, that they agreed upon with the city in our residents is unconscionable. I think about all the people that want to stay in, the, in our city, but they can't. I also think about the family with a modest income, the family who loses income going part-time to take care of a, of a newborn child. I also think of my friends from Local 26 hotel and restaurant, restaurant workers um, and, and other union workers as well. I talk frequently with members of the Chinese Progressive Association. Um, they have some great ideas about updating IDP requirements to ensure working class families have access to housing and what we are building housing address the needs of Boston residents rather than speculation and profit. Increasing affordable housing will keep Boston a diverse and vibrant city. Housing should be a human right and updating the IDP requirements may also help to combat homelessness. So in the interest of transparency, I think we need to discuss this issue and what's happening. Ensure our database or an accounting system, inventory, and how the system or process can be improved to ensure this does not take place again. Moreover, we need to look at updating IDP requirements so that we may in a, re a diverse and vibrant city for all and that we're able to build more affordable housing, we're able to build housing for the poor, we're able to get housing for uh, working families and we can do more on this issue. I just want to say thank you to um, the sponsors, Councilor Flaherty and Councilor Edwards and my colleagues that have been working on this issue far longer than I have. And I, I continue to learn a lot about this issue from my city council colleagues. So um, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Flynn. <clears throat> Councillor Sabi George, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam uh, President, and thank you to the makers of uh, this order. I would like to ask that my name be added and just uh, hope that a part of this conversation includes a continued conversation that we had earlier or halfway through last year regarding access to affordable units. So once we have X amount of affordable units on any, on any project, that they do not go vacant available, able to be occupied, yet vacant, uh, and many times because of the delays that are happening here at City Hall. We need to make sure that the process of, of getting our families, our residents, into affordable units and more, more affordable units happens quickly, um, happens without delay, 
And oftentimes we find that these buildings, the market rate units, whether rental or ownership opportunities, have been filled, yet the affordable units have gone unfilled because of a delay in our work and our effort here in this building. So I do ask uh, that that be, be a part of this conversation because I think it's an important one to have. We counted middle of the summer that there were hundreds upon hundreds of vacant, available, affordable units, and um, some some protocol has been put in place to make sure that that is not occurring, uh, but I do know that it is a huge barrier to accessing affordable units in our city of Boston for our residents, so I hope that that's included as part of this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Asabi George. Madam Clerk, if you could add Councilor Asabi George na Councilor Asabi George's name. Anyone else? Uh, Councilor Janey, Councilor Siomo, Councilor Garrison, Councilor McCarthy, Councilor O'Malley, Councilor Wu, Councilor Zakum, as well as the Chair. Docket 0144 will be assigned to the Committee on Housing and Community Development. Uh, moving on to personnel orders. Docket number 0145, Councilor Campbell for Councilor O'Malley. Council O'Malley seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0145. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0145 has been passed. Docket number 0146, Councilor Campbell for Councilor Asabi George. Councilor Asabi George moves for or seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0146. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0146 has been passed. Docket number 0147, Councilor Campbell for Councilor O'Malley. Councilor O'Malley seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0147. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0147 has been passed. Docket number 0148, Councilor Campbell for Councilor Flynn. Councilor Flynn seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0148. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0148 has been passed. Docket number 0149, Councilor Campbell for Councilor Janey. Councilor Janey seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0149. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0149 has been passed. Docket number 0150, Councilor Campbell for Councilor Janey. Councilor Janey seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0150. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0150 has been passed. Docket number 0151, Councilor Campbell, offer the following order for the appointment. Uh, the chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0151. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0151 has been passed. Uh, moving on to late files. I am informed by the clerk that there are two late file matters which in the absence of objection will be added to the agenda. Hearing and seeing no objection, the two late file matters are added to the agenda. And for clarification, one is a letter from our colleague um, and another is a personnel order. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you read the letter as the first late file matter into the record? Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Frank Baker, Boston City Council District 3, January 8th, 2019. Dear President Campbell, please be advised that I will not be in attendance at the Boston City Council meeting on Wednesday, January 9th, 2019. I would also like to congratulate Councilor Althea Garrison on her swearing in and look forward to working with her in the coming year. Please ask that the City Clerk read this matter into the public record. Thank you, sincerely. Frank Baker, Boston City Council, District 3. The first late file matter will be placed on file. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read the second late file matter into the record. Second late file, January 9th, 2019. Council Campbell for Councilor Garrison. Uh, Councilor Garrison seeks suspension of the rules and passage of the second late file matter, which is a personnel order. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The second late file matter has been passed. Okay, moving on to green sheets. Anyone wishing to remove a matter from the green sheets may do so now. Moving right along. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, I am informed by the clerk that there are two late file matters to be added to the consent agenda. Seeing and hearing no objections, the two late file matters will be added to the agenda. Uh, the chair moves at this time for adoption of the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. aye. 
Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, the consent agenda has been adopted. Um, at this time, we were, I ask all guests and colleagues to please rise as we adjourn today's meeting in memory of the following individuals. <coughs> For Councillor Siomo, Michael Walsh Sr., Marie Drago. For Councillor Wu, Susan McSherry, McSheffrey. For Councillor Janey, Charles Tony Titus. Brian Keith Johnson, Sandra Walker, Queenie Williams, Davina, Davina Daniels. For Councillor Flaherty, Warren Kin Kinlan. For Councillor Baker and Flaherty, Ann Quinn and Robert Fulham. And from the entire council, a Massachusetts native and police officer, Joe Shenners, who was killed in the line of duty in Utah. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. At this time, the chair moves that when the council adjourns today, it does so in memory of the aforementioned individuals. And we are scheduled to meet again in this chamber at Boston City Hall on January 16th at 12 noon. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, the council is adjourned.